Okay. All right. I think we'll get started with uh, who we have on board as we wait for the others probably to stream. <laughs> Anyway, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening from uh, wherever you are. Uh, welcome, and thank you for joining us at the Susanna Africa chapter, the Stepping Stone session. So today's session is really to give you an overview of what we've been up to since we were established in uh, December 2020, uh, where we're going, in which direction we're taking the Africa chapter, um, giving you a bit of an overview in terms of what the governance, the staffing and the resource mobilization has been for this chapter, but also looking at a bit of the challenges and some of the expectations. We did a quick round with our members uh, last week in preparation for this uh, session, just to get a bit of a sense of uh, uh, how they see uh, the Susanna Africa chapter and where they see uh, the added value of this chapter to their work. My name is Serene Malik. I'm the Executive Secretary of the African Civil Society Network for Water and Sanitation, and I'm also the Vice Chair of the Sanitation and Water for All Partnership. Um, the Susanna Africa chapter, as you know, was established with uh, the WSCC uh, in December 2020. Quite unexpected. But this was an agreement between uh, AMCAO, uh, ANU, and WSCC in terms of who would be hosting uh, the chapter. ANU, within its key pillars of its strategic plan, does have the knowledge management component. So we were very enthusiastic and very excited that we were actually able to operationalize at least one pillar within our strategic plan. Today's session, we'll be looking at, um, we'll have Dr. Anna Panessa from GIZ, who will give us a global overview of Susanna, but also a bit of the experiences from the other chapters, uh, what they've been up to, and what it is as the Susanna Africa chapter that we aspire to moving forward. It's still young, uh, but within having a number of growth spurts, um, and uh, uh, the expectation is that we will reach where our colleagues are. Uh, I will go ahead and give you a snapshot of our governance structure and actions um, in the past uh, six months, what we've been up to and um, how we've been uh, organizing ourselves on the continent. And we will then uh, turn a bit the focus on what the Susanna chapter, Africa chapter was actually established for. Yes, sharing, knowledge, peer learning, exchange, but more than anything, it was meant to redefine a bit the narrative of women professionals and WASH on the continent. All too often, when we talk about women and WASH in Africa, the picture that we get is the jerry can, is abject poverty, it is there, yes, but there's also another side of things where we have women uh, within the professional card that are actually very active in WASH. So we are hoping that the Susanna Africa chapter, as it was established, will bring to the fore a bit some of these stories as uh, 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 just to, to, to go back to the fact that we are not a single uh, story. We have also invited, and I'm glad to see uh, Comfort Kanchio of AMCAO to give us a bit of an overview of the African Sanitation Policy Guidelines. This is important because it does link heavily to the Susanna Africa chapter and to some of the work that we're going to be doing within uh, the policy guidelines. And we will also have Dr. Leonita Sumba, who's the chair of Women and Water, uh, to give us a bit of a perspective from Kenya. They've just come from a very big uh, uh, conference that they were able to convene on youth and gender. So again, touching on the issues of sanitation, touching on the in issues of uh, women professionals, and also what were the outcomes uh, from the East African uh, uh, side. We'll then have uh, a short queue and a session, and uh, we will sum up as we go towards, uh, of course, a Stockholm uh, World Water Week, whereby we would be co-convening with uh, AMCAO on the session of knowledge and the hub of hubs, as well as the Susan Africa chapter. So without further ado, thank you very much for being here with us today. And I would like to introduce and welcome Dr. Anna Panessar. Uh, Anna, over to you. Thank you. 
Um, can I share my screen now? Is that maybe I'll try. Let me stop sharing on my end. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, that's good. And we'll try to present it. Okay. Do you see the slide? Yes. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Yes. Okay. So so great, and 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 thank you. And uh, I was as well asked to to talk a bit about the the general or the global perspective. Um, so what I was thinking, I will start with. If I manage to go to the next slide. Yeah, there's a, there's a complicated governance model, which we uh, try to, to find out and which was developed a few years back. <clears throat> so I'll, Su Susanna now has this about 13,000 members of, of the discussion forum, about 350 uh, institutions or, or who are, have sort of as institutional uh, partners uh, subscribe to the vision document and it all started with about 20 people meeting in 2007 ahead of the International Year of Sanitation and, and hoping that this will not be too infrastructure driven and will uh, sort of that we could identify what sustainability and how can we contribute to sustainability. And already in the end of 2008, we were thinking, OK, should we close it down? But then and we had meetings after meetings to say that maybe it's enough now. And then it was felt as useful. So we were growing and growing. Um, it's a it's a loose network and a voluntary network. So there's no um, there's no fee that you have to pay. Uh, and it was meant uh, that it, during the preparation of the international year that if two organizations have similar things to two that if they do it together one and one is more than two on one hand so this matchmaking aspect and the other aspect was that if the whole sector everybody says something different then the outside world will not understand what do we want so if we can unite unite our voice and and have a a joint uh, message that what we think is important if it comes to sustainable sanitation, then that would be really helpful. So the vision document was a key outcome. Now, just going through this governance model a little bit, there is a secretariat and um, that's uh, situated in the GIZ program uh, in, in Germany and sort of the base functions from the beginning were sort of financed from uh, the German ministry and but it wouldn't work with a lot of other inputs from other organizations who helped in making happen the Stockholm meeting, for example, or, or different activities. And if a group of Susanna partners uh, sort of join hands and say this is what we want to do together, then we were calling this a cooperation system uh, and the larger cooperation systems had a, an advisory board. Uh, and that was sort of then introduced to the core group meeting, saying that this is what we want to do. We'll use the library and in the end we'll have more good literature in the library. So the core group said, yeah, well, this is as well in line with what uh, Susanna uh, stands for. So go ahead. And uh, we were from day one. The question was, how can we actually be closer to the regions? How can we be closer to different uh, countries and languages? and the idea of what could be regional chapters came up um, and it took some time un until we then said okay maybe these can as well be cooperation systems they can have a starting point they can have deliverables they have an advisory board and then uh, they they show what they'll sort of contribute to the global susanna and that's sort of a, understood by the core group and then let's go um, and I'm, I'm mentioning that this whole model is sort of a uh, Susanna is not a uh, institution. It was started as a loose network actually to avoid becoming an institution. Still, we try to have a governance and now as it's so old and so big, uh, we have a process to rework this governance model and as well the, the, the sort of the, the, the financing model and um, that's currently happening. But I wanted to introduce that on a global level because sort of the Africa chapter is from the logic a cooperation system uh, of Susanna that's contributing to Susanna on the global level. So I wanted to just sort of take this as a starting point. So now again, I have to manage to come to the next slide. I don't know why that's. 
Okay, then um, I think what this stepping stone meeting will help us is sort of to to say that there is the Susanna meeting uh, and we can bring some input from here to the 31st Susanna meeting. What are the messages that we, that we can bring there? Um, and how, what can we then put into the plenary or into sort of other meetings during the week? Uh, and we can uh, have a better understanding um, on what are regional chapters and how is the progress as well in Africa. Um, for that, sort of as a run up to the August meeting, we had uh, these stepping uh, stone sessions. Uh, one, uh, two of them happened already, one in India, one in Latin, Latin America, and here we are uh, with the one for the uh, Susanna meeting, and here we go. Um, the Susanna Africa chapter, I think uh, Serene just uh, explained that how it started, and I'm very curious what we'll learn more about um, what's what's currently on and, and what's the perspective, so I'm, I'm really happy to to uh, to listen to that and to have time to discuss it. Um, the India chapter as as Susanna as a whole was sort of started before the International Year of Sanitation uh, with a concern that uh, sustainability might not be looked into enough. Uh, then in India we had that uh, from the from the president that uh, clean India Swachh Bharat campaign. And again, there from the many members as well of Susanna in India, it was felt that how can we as well uh, wave the flag for sunny, for sustainability here, that it's not too toilet focused, but that sort of the what happens after the toilet and what's around the toilet management operation and so on, that this is taken into account. Uh, and then a, 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 a set of um, thematic discussions on the forum were sort of the starting point of the India yeah, chapter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and again, here in the India chapter, we wow. had a steering group. Uh, we had some time where it was financed then uh, by an Indian uh, organization and then a group of Indian organizations. <clears throat> and then the period was over and then formally we could say that, OK, now let's close it down. But then uh, we decided, OK, it might be in a, in a sleeping mode or in a hibernating mode until new projects come up. And that was the reality and new projects came up. So that's sort of the, the biography of the India chapter. Um, and um, so as with Susanna, it wasn't easy to stop it. And the India chapter as well uh, has, a, has a strong life in its own, it seems. Um, the Warner chapter was felt that there's so much going on in the region in Jordan and so on that, would, that it would be good to, um, to, to document that and as well to talk here so that different organizations know from each other what they're actually doing and as well to have some materials in Arabic. Um, we started it in 2017. I think there were good contributions coming along, but here actually with some changes in the financing organizations and in personal who is as well having good career opportunities at the moment, this is a sleeping chapter, I would say, and we're sort of here in the face to say that where are we, who is around, what can we do and how can the WANA chapter go on. The Latin America chapter is um, uh, started in September 2018, again as an initiative of a group of Susanna partners with a, with a set of, of activities and is doing really well and is doing as well uh, stuff in, in, in Spanish, uh, Portuguese and catering to the local uh, uh, means to the region. And I think something that the the Latin America chapter did, they did sort of country representatives. Um, and um, it seems that this is really working well. And at the moment, we're all learning from the different experiences of the chapter. Um, and I think that's as well important to then uh, channel back to the to the global change management process, because there the idea is that regional chapters should be more and more important in the future of Susanna. I think that's my short overview. And um, let me unshare the screen. Yeah, that's it from my side. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, uh, Anna, for giving us a bit the overview, but also the status of the various uh, chapters. 
I like the expression sleeping chapter. So I'm hoping that Africa, <laughs> I know we've just started. And we hope not to be asleep at any point. You look very lively. Yeah. <laughs> and we hope to infuse that liveliness into our chapter as we move along. Um, all right. The Susanna Africa chapter. So, a word of uh, caution or word of uh, endearment. Um, a new move slowly but surely. Uh, slowly being the operative word for a number of uh, reasons. Because it was restructured in 2017-2018, uh, um, its entire governance framework needed to be reviewed. Uh, an entire uh, a strategic plan needed to be uh, developed. Um, so we move, like I said, slowly but uh, uh, surely. The Susanna Africa chapter, as I mentioned, is a key pillar of the African Civil Society Network. Why? Because our fourth strategic objective was actually on knowledge management. And amongst our key partnerships that had been identified, which was SWA, AMCAO, Susanna is equally one of them. Now, the discussion for the Susanna Africa chapter started sometime in April 2020 with WSSCC. And we know it was with a nudge from AMCAO in who was going to host the Africa chapter on the continent. A new being the civil society umbrella organization, but also because it has a memorandum of understanding with AMCAO, was the one that had been selected to do this and to reach civil society organizations, but also have civil society organizations share the work that they are doing. So we got support from WSSCC, uh, sorry for the typo uh, error, which is now the Sanitation and Hygiene uh, uh, Fund and rolled out the uh, Susanna Africa chapter. Uh, it took us uh, between disbursements of funds and the actual implementation approximately four months, uh, development of the websites uh, and bringing on board a coordinator uh, to support the uh, implementation of the uh, chapter. Now, the rationale, as I mentioned, behind the Susanna Africa chapter, there were a number of key important features. The most important feature, as I mentioned, was the issue of women in WASH or, and youth and gender, so within that category. But there was also a sense that there's this movement on the continent that talks a lot about the decolonization of WASH on the continent. So that kind of peppered a bit um, the, 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 the thinking also behind the establishment of the Susanna Africa chapter, where we needed the knowledge from the continent, its profile to be raised, to be a lot more visible, and having something moving from south to north. Uh, so this was really what had motivated or what was the spirit as well behind the establishment of the Susan Africa chapter. There was also in terms of the learnings, yes, the successes of the different initiatives that partners and members undertake on the continent, but also accepting the failures and lessons learned and knowing what it is that worked and what is it that did not work within our various contexts. So that was really in terms of how we went about it. So we launched the chapter uh, in um, November 2020, around November, it was December 2020. Uh, we did have a pretty good turnout. We managed to run a couple of uh, webinars linked to the Susan Africa chapter. Uh, on uh, lessons learned from the WSCC uh, uh, programs. So that was really interesting, but also had a session on women and WASH even then, where we had water aid and a number of other organizations, including AMCAO, come and talk to us a bit about what are the aspirations or what it is we're looking forward to and what was the call to action really uh, behind that. So those were really some of the key activities that were undertaken at that point. Now, in terms of the governance and structure, initially we were to have what was called a steering group. But as I mentioned earlier on, there has been a review of the governance framework within ANU. 
out of that review was born in December 2020 as well, what is known as the Board Advisory Committee, which is an arm of the governing board and the governing council within ANU. And while we looked at how the steering group would fit in this, it was best, uh, it was deliberated that it was best that the Board Advisory Committee actually be the one to provide the support that the Susanna Africa Regional Chapter requires to avoid additional administrative layers, but also the management of another board, because that would have been three boards now within a new uh, framework on limited capacity. Now, this board advisory committee, we have the African Development Bank, we have Water Aid, we have Speak Up Africa, uh, we have uh, retired members, we have um, a member from SADC as well, uh, and we have some of our uh, new members, including WhatsApp, that are actually running the board advisory committee. Um, in terms of staffing, we had a bit of a lull, I'll be honest, uh, anytime between uh, January, February and March. Um, and uh, we felt within the secretariat that it was really important because this is an important partnership that we probably need to staff this position at 100%, which is what we did. We brought actually somebody on board that has been inducted uh, and uh, that uh, is has been supporting the Suzanne Africa chapter. We did this from within our own resources as we prepare the mobilization of further resources. Uh, but the idea is that let's show that it works. Let's have a full, uh, a full, a full product that is functioning, um, and pitch that as well to various partners that um, would be willing to support us. Our activities. So we've had a number of online forums, uh, particularly as I mentioned on issues of women and wash. The last one was actually on uh, the program that is taking place in East Africa on sex for water a couple of discussion boards, and also the development of a documentary on women professionals in WASH. I would have loved to share the documentary, but I'm afraid, I'm afraid the share tray might keep us here until this evening if I do that. So I will go ahead and um, send you the links where we managed to reach out to a number of uh, service providers and speak to the women in there and what were their challenges and their expectations and how it is that they have been uh, um, uh, functioning. Other activities that we have been taking place are also a similar session to this one, to the stepping stone session, where we have reached out to members, members within every region and run them through the Susanna Africa chapter, uh, pushing them, encouraging them to become members, uh, running them through a bit, you know, what are the expectations, hearing from them and uh, uh, getting them uh, on board. So we've actually run a number of meetings on the continent uh, on uh, the use of the Susan Africa chapter. Um, as we consulted, of course, with the members and the various partners, some of the challenges, of course, have been in terms of documentation. Um, I must say we're not very good at uploading, <laughs> documenting uh, uh, or trying to get stories. So that is the reason why this person that has been put there on 100 percent capacity is actually supporting the collection of these programs, initiatives and uh, lessons learned and the work that has been done on the continent to populate a bit um, our uh, uh, Susanna Africa chapter. Expectations are the same that we had when we had the consultative review with the members on the continent and the one that we had about three months ago is of course more visibility on their programs but this visibility linked as well to resource mobilization. As you know, civil society, we're a bit constrained. Well, that is an understatement uh, when it comes to resources. Um, so anything that can support, uh, that can uh, uh, amplify our voices, that can uh, shine the spotlight on us is actually most welcome. And I would like to share with you a very interesting um, uh, piece of information. When we conducted a partner satisfaction survey, and as we were equally gathering the views from the members and partners on the added value of the Susanna Africa chapter, the reason, the, the reason why a member 
would pay their membership fee is because of access to tools such as the Susanna Africa chapter. So this was in the case of a new capped at about $200. When we asked them what would compel you to pay a membership fee, they actually mentioned actually knowledge, anything that had to do with knowledge, anything that had to do with increasing their visibility. So this has been a really interesting uh, insight as well uh, as we move forward. Now, next steps and what it is we're looking at, mostly the activation of the working groups. We do, there are a number of key wash events that are coming up. Uh, there are a number of processes that we're currently involved in. Um, number one, the African Sanitation uh, and Water Week that is taking place in Namibia in 2021, in November 2021. We also have the Dakar World Water Forum in terms of key wash events, and the platform has already started in terms of the engagement for the preparation, but also in terms of uh, increasing the visibility of civil society organizations in these key wash events and having those lessons being uh, shared on uh, uh, the platform and amongst the uh, memberships. We also have in terms of women in wash, I, I know I've said it many times, but it's just in terms of really uh, letting you know what is the cherry on top in terms of Susanna Africa chapter, where a number of uh, working groups have started taking place on gender-based violence in WASH. ANU has positioned itself a bit as um, the uh, uh, as wanting to be the lead or the example in terms of really talking about this issue, and the Susanna Africa chapter actually has been uh, quite active on that uh, uh, on that front. We also have the African Sanitation Policy Guideline, which Comfort is going to uh, run us through, and also using the platform in terms of. Uh, uh, sharing those learnings, but also looking at, you know, what is it that would affect the uptake of the ESPG? Where has it actually worked where the ESPG has been taken up, but also in terms of the development of messages and keeping really the world informed of the work that we are currently doing. So this in a nutshell is a bit the the what we've been up to. So moving incrementally, yes. Um, we have submitted a number of uh, proposals as well in terms of the support, the continuing support of the Susan Africa chapter, but at least for this year, this period, uh, we have managed to secure at least a one, a full-time person, as well as ensuring that all communication and uh, uh, costs are uh, covered. So that's where we stand at uh, this uh, point. I'll stop talking. And are there any questions, comments? First, uh, let us start on. Uh, Sir, can others hear Serene? All right, here we go. I'm sorry about that. Uh, if there are any questions, comments, uh, reactions, objections, uh, please, the floor is uh, open. It's absolutely exciting news. Let's see if we have hands trying to find out. Um, comfort? Yes, Comfort. Has, has a question, yeah. So yes, thank you very much, um, Serene and Annie, for the um, for the overview about what Sus Susanna is doing. Um, I just wanted it's not a question, but I just wanted to um, clarify, Serene, that the uh, Africa Water and Sanitation Week is actually happening virtually, and it's in um, November twenty second to twenty six. Um, because of the COVID restrictions, we are not able to host it in Namibia as initially planned. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you, Kamper. Yeah. I realized I forgot to mention that really important part <laughs> of the information. <laughs> okay. Other questions, contributions? Yes. 
April. Peter. Yes. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Peter from Kenya. Uh, perhaps I would want to ask more about uh, the formulation of the working groups. Yeah, uh, wh wh what criteria would be appropriate to use, uh, you know, considering Africa itself has some re uh, regional representations and also we have professionals uh, from from okay from different specializations still in the watch sex uh, sector. Yeah, I, would, I, would, I just want to hear more about that. Thank you. May I say a word on that? Yes, go ahead, Anna. So I think from the Susanna on the global level has thirteen working groups, uh, and it's as well sort of uh, always more than welcome if there's some activity in these working groups. So I think uh, even from an African chapter, if there's an overlap regarding the, the, the topic or the task, then that would be really great to, to do an activity linked to as well a global working group or maybe using a global, a global working group for work to be done. Uh, on the other hand, then if it's, if it's a separate um, topic or uh, activity, then maybe we should be careful with the wording so that people do not get completely lost and instead of 13 suddenly we have 300 working groups. So that's on a broader, a broader comment. Serene, maybe back to you. OK, thank you for the answer. Yeah. But Serene, uh you were Yes. Um, yeah. Thanks, Peter, for the uh, for the question. Um, I think Anna, yes, has answered in terms of how we would uh, uh, how it's been designed within uh, Susanna, but how we're going to coordinate it from our level because a new equally has its uh, uh, working group. So it's probably in terms of matchmaking. Um, where there is uh, points of convergence, then it goes, you know, hand in hand with uh, uh, Susanna, where we may have point of uh, divergence, for example, if it is on issues of uh, or, or water security or water resources management per se, then that may, uh, uh, that may be out of the fold uh, slightly. What we've been doing and how we've been organizing ourselves regionally is that we do convene within four to five regions. Uh, so we have the West African Francophone component that we convene with partners, uh, IFR, which is the alliance that has been established uh, within uh, uh, West Africa, as well as uh, uh, partners uh, in the West African bloc. We also have uh, the Anglophone, West Africa Anglophone, which is something that we had to delineate slightly uh, due to language issues, but also identity issues, the East African bloc and the Southern African bloc. North Africa, I uh, will not get into it uh, at this point as it is uh, non-existent and I think for many other partners. So that is how we have more or less organized ourselves. But there's also been a drive to make sure that the members and partners are becoming members. And that is what we've been working on. Um, just getting them, please just go in, register as a, uh, as a member uh, in terms of the, the Susan Africa chapter. Um, so I, that is a bit how we've more or less organized ourselves. We're still refining a bit the process, but this is in terms of what we're looking at. I hope that uh, answers your question, uh, Peter. Most definitely. All right, great. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Are there any further questions? I'd like us to go to comfort or any objections. Please feel free to put those in the chat box. Um, Anna, is there anything else you'd like to add? If not, then I will hand it over to comfort. Uh, maybe one one remark. I think it's, it's great sort of that you explained the governance of the African chapter and how is it developing. Uh, and I think to to document that uh, and as well to share it with the change management task force uh, would be could be a yes. creative process yeah. because yes. if if the chapters should play a role in any future model of Susanna, then I think the current experiences are very relevant. 
that's on one hand, and the other hand is um, the, the the role of Susanna is facilitation among partners. So I think from the governance as well, the signal should be very uh, much the door is open. The door is open to other partners to become involved or to, to be part uh, in one or the other way on on how things develop. Um, and um, just sort of to make make sure that's that's happening. Okay. Thank you. Yes, uh, absolutely, Anna. You're right. I would have to do the update on that uh, on that front. Um, all right. Without further ado, I'd like to invite uh, Comfort Kanchia just to give us an overview of what has been the most important process uh, in the last two years on the continent, which is the development of the African Sanitation Policy Guideline uh, process and uh, the. Uh, excellent launch that took place about uh, three to four weeks ago as well as the champion being the first lady of uh, Sierra Leone comfort if I'm not mistaken uh, so again positioning women uh, within uh, the wash uh, uh, narrative uh, so just to hear a bit from comfort comfort what will be your expectations of such of the chapter but also what next um moving forward over to you comfort thank you <laughs> thank you very much serene and i'm so happy to be here um so as serene already mentioned my name is comfort can share and it's so good to see familiar faces on the platform dr lunita it's good to see you and good to see every other person who you were very instrumental in the SPG um, process and good to see um, everyone here. Um, my name is Comfort Kanshio. I work at the African Minister's Council on Water um, to support the ASPG um, development and the entire sanitation program. Um, so as Serene already mentioned, today I will give us um, an overview of the ASPG, how it started, um, how uh, up to the launch and where we are um, at the moment. Uh, I must say that quite a number of you here must have been familiar with the presentation, but I do um, believe that there are one or two persons that um, have not had the opportunity to, to, to understand what the ASPG is about. So um, pardon me if some of the, um, the points, uh, you are familiar with them already. So right, um, before I dive into the presentation, um, I wanted to just, um, first of all, I, I, I'm going to um, turn off my video and the cameras just so that um, the internet um, permits um, us to be stable during the presentation. So um, for those of you who have not seen, the ASPG document have not been distributed widely yet. So this is just what it looks like, um, the, the hard copy. So just, you know, but then this can also, this is also available on our website. So um, thank you. I'll just go straight to my presentation. You have muted your mic. Maybe you have to unmute your mic. Thank you. Can you see my screen? No, when you select, when you select the left uh, example, now we can only see the chat of the Teams channel. So you have maybe to unselect and then share again and select the full screen or the PowerPoint that you want to show. Can you see my screen now? 
Yes, it's the PowerPoint, yes. and I think now you will. Sorry? Yes, it's good. Uh, if you start okay. the presentation, I guess we'll see the presentation. Just trying to. <coughs> Put that in. Okay. Yeah, here we go. Is that okay? Great. So, my presentation outline this afternoon um, will follow to us. So, a bit of background about the African Sanitation Policy Guidelines, um, the development of the ASPG, the process we went through, um, what is contained in the ASPG. Um, the pro progress on ASPG rollout that is following the um, the launch of the ASPG, where things are and how we are progressing. So the ASPG was conceptualized in 2017 by AMCAL, um, following following um, support to member states. So AMCAL supported um, four member states to develop sanitation uh, um, policies in the um, before 2017. Um, and the experience um, showed that the policies were not um, uniform, the contents were different, and they were not, um, amongst other things, supporting the continent to achieving the um, sustainable sanitation. So um, the ASPG development is uh, funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And, and before the ASPG commenced, before the development of the ASPG commenced, um, AMCAL constituted an executive committee members made up of um, World Health Organization, Speak Up Africa, and Center for Water Security Cooperation. So the three organizations, including AMCAL, um, formed the executive committee. And then AMCAL went further to establish a task force. The task force are a group of experts spread um, across Africa and, and around the world to contribute their expertise in sanitation to improve or enhance the content of the ASPG um, document. So to get to understand um, the policy landscape in the African continent, AMCAL conducted uh, an assessment of 26 national sanitation policies. First of all, the objective was to understand if there are sanitation in the first place, are there sanitation policies? And if there are, what are the content? What does it say? And how would the ASPG be of help? Of help. So the policies were obtained from member states directly, and then the policies assessed were between 1997 to 2016. That was, so 2016 has the, is the most recent um, policy um, that was assessed in amongst the 26 national sanitation policies. Um, it's, uh, it was shocking to see that over 10 uh, um, for, for some policies have been in draft form for over um, 10 years during the assessment. I think as I go down, you would, you would see that. And then the results of the policy assessment further confirm the need that a document such as the African Sanitation Policy Guideline is critical to guide member states to develop inclusive and comprehensive sanitation policies. So this is just a snapshot of what um, the assessment report looks like. And we did, we have other um, elements, but I thought just to um, project this. So you would see that, so the status of national sanitation policies, 61% uh, of the 26 policies assessed were developed during the Millennium Development Goals. 73% um, did not mention the sources, their sources of funding. 46% um, of the policies only 46 are approved, others are either in draft form, um, under review, or some did not even state where they are in terms of their policy development. And 62% of the policies are not inclined towards achieving sustainable, um, uh, safely managed sanitation. Further to the assessment report, AMCAL did um, a country consultation um, exercise. So the idea of the country consultation exercise was to get 
um, real-time information from countries as to what they want and to be reflected in the ASPG document. So we did not just want to depend on what their existing policies are saying, because in any case, most of them were outdated, were obsolete. But we wanted to hear what are the current challenges countries are having and how would they want that to be reflected in the ASPG in order to accelerate adoption. So we did this country consultation in 12 countries, um, is 12 countries, as you would see from the map um, to my right, in Zambia, Malawi, Ethiopia, South Sudan, Kenya, Niger, Nigeria, um, Ghana, Senegal, and Uganda. Um, so that was where we did the country consultation in 12 countries um, before COVID-19 hit. So because of COVID, we're not able to continue and um, face-to-face -face consultation with, uh, with the uh, member states. But we did organize virtual um, consultation meetings and we had quite a number of countries that did not that were not able to visit during the face-to-face -face consultation, participated in those um, virtual consultation, and then we harmonized the comments from all the countries. And the comment from those countries was what formed um, the content of the ASPG document. So the con Comfort, are you there? We've lost your sound, Comfort. Let me send her a message. I think she may have to reconnect. Let's give her a minute. Let's give her a few, just a minute. If we can't, then maybe we'll move to Leonita, Dr. Sumba, who's here. I'll try and see. Um, I think we may have to come back to comfort. Uh, I don't know how long she may take. Uh, Dr. Sumba, would you like to go ahead as we... Yes, Sarin. Yes. I think I can. Yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Sumba. Welcome, welcome. I think we've lost comfort momentarily, but uh, okay. I think let us just proceed with you and then come back to comfort later on. Okay, thank you. Welcome, Dr. Sumba. Thank uh, you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you, Sarin. Will you allow me to share? How do I do that? Okay, so there's an, if you look at the bottom next to your mic icon, you'll see open share tray.
Okay. Have you managed? Can you, have, can you see it? No, you haven't pressed share. Okay. Go to the window where your presentation is and then press share. Okay, there you go. Okay, you can see it? Yes. So you can remove okay. the update now and uh, just go ahead and proceed with the presentation. Okay, thank yeah. you very much and good afternoon all. Good afternoon from Kenya. Uh, okay, my name is Leonita Sumba. I think I, I hope I'm still sharing. No, you're not, Leonita. We're just seeing huh. you. I don't know what has happened. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Is it okay now? No, still not. Okay, now it's fine. Now it's fine, huh? Yes. Okay, but so my topic is uh, women and wash, raising the profile of women professionals. In I don't know what's happening. No, don't worry, uh, Leonita. Just go ahead. Uh, we'll 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 share the presentation later on. Just send it to me. Okay. Yeah. Just go ahead. You can do stop sharing. Yeah. It's we'll like someone us. else is sharing. Because what I'm seeing on uh, the desk. Okay, you can just go ahead, uh, Dr. Sumba. Okay, so as I said, my um, topic is women and wash, raising the profile of women professionals in wash in Africa. And uh, here's my outline. We are going to have some, uh, a brief on what uh, women in water and sanitation association is, then uh, reflections on why we need to raise the profile and what is it we must do to raise the profile and how should we do it? Then we'll have some conclusions. Okay, so my organization is uh, Women in Water and Sanitation Association Kenya, and it's uh, registered under Societies Act in Kenya. And it was started as a, uh, an initiative to reinforce the role of women in water and sanitation management in, in Kenya. And we have members drawn from both public and private sectors, uh, non-government organization. We have students who are undertaking water and sanitation related courses. And then we also have male champions uh, throughout the, the country. So this association is affiliated to the main water service providers association called WASPA in the country. And then KEWASNET, which is a uh, civil society network, and then uh, we are also affiliated to to Afwa. Okay. A minute. Okay. So, what are our? What is our vision of success? Our vision of success is an empowered woman or empowered women at the core of water, sanitation, and, and hygiene. And we do this through capacity building, advocacy, mentorship, knowledge management, and networking. So we have some priority areas, which is uh, the urban poor, living in informal settlements, rural women uh, without access to water and sanitation, primary school going children, manual pit, pit emptiers, especially where uh, sanitation is not provided, uh, services are not provided, water pollution, we are engaged in river cleaning, menstrual, <coughs> sorry, hygiene management. And then we are also looking at uh, women water professionals whom we believe if they are empowered, then there'll be a trickle down effect to the others. Then uh, of course, the female students who are undertaking water and sanitation related courses. Okay, so now when uh, let's have some reflections on why we need to raise the profile of, of women. 
because we are going to have more questions than than answers in this. I just want to raise our our curiosity uh, so that we we reflect on why would we need to raise our profile. So is it because of the SDG five that talks of empowering all women and girls? Is it about achieving universal equitable access to safe and affordable drinking water? Is it about target 6.2 on looking at uh, the needs of women and girls and those that are vulnerable? Is it about responsibility? We all know that women play a central role in uh, provision, management, and safeguarding of water. We know about the disproportionate uh, burden where women bear the burden when there's no adequate water and sanitation. So as we ask, why, why raise our profile? Is it about gender-based violence where wash facilities are inadequate? We've seen that uh, women and girls are exposed to gender-based violence. Underrepresentation, like in our country, Kenya, we only have four out of 88 uh, uh, managing directors of water utilities being uh, women and only two out of 11 CEOs of water sector institutions being uh, women. And recently a World Bank study uh, carried out in 2019 found out that uh, of all, uh, globally only 18% of women workers uh, in the water utility, uh, of, uh, of all the workers in the water utilities are, are women. Then uh, is it about the leaky pipeline metaphor, whereby we have a lot of uh, women dropping down along the science, technology, and mathematics uh, careers. So as we continue asking ourselves why, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's very clear about the benefits of diversity and inclusion. They've been well spelled out. Is it that we have not communicated this well? Like for instance, they say, uh, a study by World Bank says uh, when there is a diversity and inclusion at workplace, we'll have improved service delivery, we'll have better decision making, better financial performance, greater innovation, greater customer satisfaction, better outcomes and compliance, better employee retention, a safe and uh, operating environment, improved community. Uh, community relations and better governance. And it also goes ahead and uh, looks at a community. When there is diversity and inclusion, we have enhanced performance outcomes, both at household level and at community level. And then women are also empowered to make decisions at their household. And both social and political empowerment also improves. So is it about that? So. We need to find our why. And then I look at this quote, a society that fails to harness energy and creativity of its women, it's a huge disadvantage to the modern world. And then I ask myself, and I can ask all of us listening to this, to this why is the energy and the creativity not being appreciated? Why is it not being harnessed? Is our energy, is our creativity relevant? If I flash back to 2005, we had 40 women ministers of water or environment. At that high level, since then, how come 2021, we are still talking about raising the profile of women? What critical mass is needed for us to be able to make an impact in the water and sanitation sector? In 1995, there was the Beijing Declaration, and the many countries, including our own country, uh, uh, signed against this of empowering women and gender equality. And most recently, we had the Generation Equality Forum. Again, issues that were there in 1995 are still uh, appearing in 2021, although there have been improvement. But still, we are talking about gender-based violence. We are talking about uh, raising our profile. Yeah. Then we ask, what value, what solutions are we bringing to the table? If we have these solutions, how are we communicating them? And for our value to be appreciated or it to be, it has to be relevant. 
So then how do we fix this? I have a slide there, which I like so much. It shows the challenges in the water and sanitation sector. There are many, ranging from financing, going to inadequate water, open defecation, inadequate management of data, water governance, high energy costs, most recently COVID, water scarcity. And when I look at this slide, I think that's where we should be deriving our why from. If we are able to sort out the issues in the, in the water and sanitation sector, if we're able to sort out the challenges, then we'll be able to come out clearly and even communicate as women that this is what we are looking at. And this is what we are trying to, to solve, okay? And then uh, looking at that, I came across some female inventors. We have a Dr. Shirley Jackson. She invented something to do with telecommunication. We have Maria Curie in radioactivity. We have Maria Telx in solar. We have Anna in stem cell. We have computer programming by Grace. And then uh, the DNA double helix by Rosalind, although it was given to someone else, Watson. So, why are there still so few female inventors? Or is it that women are doing things, but these are not being uh, highlighted? What are the challenges? Okay. And then uh, there's this uh, slide that I also like uh, showing. It shows barriers. I don't know if you can see it. Can you see it? Yes, sir, we can see it. You can see it, yes. Yeah. Sure. So this has been going around and it's showing uh, women have a lot of barriers on their path while the men have a freeway and they are competing for the same opportunities. So we have barriers that we must uh, overcome and these barriers can be at policy level, at organizational level, in learning institutions, civil societies, and as individuals. For us to raise our profile, we have to overcome these barriers. For example, as an enabling environment, what are the policies? Some of them, um, like what comfort is uh, as just presented. What are invest in investments? What about uh, monitoring and evaluation? The gender analysis, does it bring out uh, the issues, the gender issues, the women issues. What about at organizational level? The policies to do with the recruitment, the practice through recruitment, the diversity, the training, the coaching, sexual harassment in institutions, the work environment can become a barrier. In learning institutions, what role models do we have? Female role models, mentorship, Sexual harassment, again, this has brought down students and uh, they are not able to pursue their careers the way they want. Curriculum, how do we expose the students, the, the, the women who are undertaking uh, uh, STEM courses or the women who are undertaking water-related courses? How are the facilities, are they facilitative? How do we link them with the industries? When it comes to the society, the stereotypes, how do we overcome the barriers? the gender bias, the cultural barriers. Then um, on a lighter note in society, we say that women uh, have a lot of family uh, responsibilities. They wash clothes and all this, like the photo is showing. But again, uh, the other day something was going, some clip was going around and it showed Angel uh, Merkel. And it showed that she even washes, uh, she does her own laundry. She cooks her food, but that didn't stop her from getting uh, uh, to be a, uh, the leader of, uh, of that country. Then we have as individuals, what is our capacity? Is it a barrier? Self-doubt, our skills, our personal branding, how do we package ourselves? Yes, 
so that when the opportunities come, we will be ready. Okay. Then we look at the how, and uh, all this came from the, we just come from uh, Youth and Women's Sanit uh, Water and Sanitation Conference about a week ago. And all this uh, came from uh, the women. They talked about this and they, they say that some of the barriers can be overcome through training and capacity building, through awareness creation, through mentorship, through female role modeling, through gender mainstreaming at all levels, inclusion and participation of women in decision making at all levels. Workplace also became very, uh, one of the issues that they raised, they said, we need a safe workplace. We need a safe environment in order to work and excel. Succession planning, uh, are the institutions helping our organization uh, intentionally putting a succession plan so that the women can raise up in the ranks. Gender sensitive budgeting, gender analysis to highlight specific issues that are hindering women from advancing, and then set disaggregated data to help uh, monitor and evaluate progress on gender equality. Other recommendations that came out of the conference was advocacy at a high level. Like in that conference, we managed to, 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 to get our uh, cabinet secretary, our minister attending, and she's with us all through. So she's going to support our, our um, association. So it's important that we lobby at the high level. If we are going to, 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 to really raise our profile, then we need to get uh, the, the, the highest level supporting us. Knowledge management. And then learning from the men, how do they do it? How do they manage to get to this position? Then uh, maybe it's high time we start looking at them and uh, getting some men mentors to show us how to get there. Then influencing policy programs and projects and activities, research and partnership, and strengthening women professional networks. For example, our network is not as, um, as strong as uh, the WASPA. So WASPA is, uh, is now taking over to come and strengthen us. So we are partnering with WASPA, which is the larger network of water service providers to strengthen WIWAS, which is our women uh, association. Then increasing visibility, like uh, what I've just talked about the conference. And then deliberate inclusion and assigning women traditional um, uh, to tasks traditionally considered for men and then scholarships. So I think that's how uh, we are going to, to get our profile raised. Then uh, finally, uh, I would like to conclude by asking us to join the UNESCO World uh, Water Assignment Program in the call for action on accelerating gender equality in water domain and bridging the gap, the data gap and developing concrete actions. And this call is going to target decision makers and political leaders. And the aim is uh, promoting women leadership in water and management, protecting women's water rights and applying gender financing, narrowing the gender gap, prioritizing sex disaggregated data, and overcoming norms and stereotypes that disadvantage men and women. So there are materials that can be freely downloaded and then distributed freely on uh, social media. So thank you very much and uh, God bless you. Thank, you. thank you very much, Dr. Sumba, for that very passionate presentation. Thank you for reminding us why and for reinforcing why even as the Susanna Africa chapter rolls out, the focus was actually on women professionals, women uh, and uh, WASH. Um, I, I'm really thrilled to hear about some of the outcomes, the whys, the hows, uh, and some of the solutions, as you mentioned, that can be put to, uh, to, to, to the service of this uh, cause. Yes, you're right. It's a very important question. We've been talking about women visibility for the last uh, 
uh, three decades and we're not seeing the progress. I'm also shocked to find out that it's four female MDs out of 88. I thought we were a bit more, but uh, uh, that's interesting to, to know. I know we just have about 10, 15 minutes. I can see Comfort is back online. Um, but Comfort, if I can ask you to try and compress what you were going to present in five minutes max, just to give us a bit the highlights of uh, uh, of the ASPG process and how it would link to the uh, chapter. Uh, and maybe just open the floor quickly for three, four minutes of questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Serena. And apologies for that um, technology hiccup. So I will just... No, I don't want to Uh, maybe uh, during the technical break, just to comment that uh, during the Susanna meeting in August, there is a session with a focus on, on women networks and gender. Um, Maren Hövels is uh, helping to organize it. I think uh, Shobana is involved as well. And I think the aim is to give an overview on what's going on and, and as well give some examples just to make sure that this is, uh, I think this is a very good uh, place as well to feature the activities of the Africa chapter. Yep. Okay. Can I, can I proceed? Yes, okay. go ahead, Comfort. Yes. We just have okay. about five minutes tops. Yeah, yeah I just yeah. run through this. Uh, Thank you. So these are the um, outcomes from the country, from the country consultation meetings um, that um, member states wanted to us to reflect in the ASBG. So you would see capacity development, clarity on institutional mandate, sanitation systems and services, um, the scope. Scope of the um, the scope of the document, the wanted menstrual hygiene, um, solid waste, sanitation in public places, climate adaptation, and all of that. So, um, what what then is the ASPG? So, the ASPG is designed to provide guidance to African government um, on how to develop a sanitation policy. So, the process and content of developing sanitation policies. It is designed for policymakers, consultants, NGOs, and anybody involved in policy development um, that want to use the ASPG, not only in the sanitation, um, in sanitation policy development, but the ASPG can be borrowed into developing other sanitation policies as well. Well, and the scope of the ASPG um, is, limited, is limited to fecal waste, so human um, urine, feces, and anal cleansing materials, and then menstrual hygiene management and hand washing. So the ASPG is divided into four parts. Um, um, part one talks about about the scope of the guidelines, how to apply the guidelines. And part two talks about the decision-making process. So the decision-making process help countries to understand where they are in terms of their policy development and how the ASPG can come in. So this uh, chapter two help member states to understand that the ASPG can be applied irrespective of where they are in terms of their sanitation development and the context with which they, they, they find themselves. Um, part three is the meat of the document and it contains the content, comprehensive content that should be included in an inclusive sanitation policy. So chapter three, part three has um, chapters three to 10 and we have um, the vision, objective and principles, sanitation service systems, hygiene uh, and sanitation behavior change, institutional arrangement, um, funding, monitoring and evaluation. And we <laughs> also provide a step-by-step -step guide of how to develop an implementation strategy. So progress on the ASPG rollout. As you um, you all may be aware, the ASPG was launched on the 10th of June um, by the AMCAL president. 
And during that launch, we had a couple of couple of ministers present who committed to adopting the ASPG um, to, to raise the momentum of, 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 of the ASPG and demonstrated their willingness to adopt the document. So following the launch of the ASPG on the 10th of June, the ASPG is fully and officially available for adoption and uptake by member states, by organizations, institutions who may want to use it in, in their various work. Now, AMPAO is available to support countries, ministries, departments, or agencies um, to begin the process of adopting the ASPG. As a first step, uh, I invite everyone on this platform, if you are interested in using the ASPG, to visit our website. And there, there is a country um, demand form. Um, that form um, contains preliminary questions and um, just overview about your country, where you are in terms of your policy development, um, how ready, how read your level of readiness and willingness to adopt the ASPG. So once you go through that form and complete it and submit it, we assess the form, analyze it, and then that informs um, how we support you. So in terms of, because quite a number of countries will be filling that form. So once we analyze that based on your information, we'll then rank um, when you would, when we would approach a, come to you for the support that you need. So I invite every interested person to visit our website to fill that form. Now, establishment of policy and engagement and um, coordination platform, what we call the PSEP. So that's what, 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 what we call the PSEP. So the partner coordination and engagement platform it brings together different stakeholders, different organizations that are involved in implementing sanitation work in different countries. So the idea is for uniformity, because the ASPG, um, so now that it's launched, a lot of partners are indicating interest to implement it. So without a standard approach of how that should be rolled out, different people would would do different things. So the idea of the coordination platform is to bring together partners and understand, learn from how they are working in their countries in relation to the ASPG. And then that platform will also help other partners who are willing to start implementing the ASPG in the countries where they work, not to start from the scratch, to leverage the, the experience um, from other partners and just run with it instead of starting everything um, from, this, from the scratch. So um, further to that, AMCA is also developing a policy assessment tool. Um, this policy assessment tool will help countries to mirror their sanitation policies against the ASPG. So, in so because the ASPG is a large document, countries need to understand the gap in their sanitation policies in line with the ASPG. So this assessment tool will summarize the core elements in the ASPG. So countries will then check, for example, um, do I have regulation in my sanitation policy? If yes, what should be the content on that regulation section? So that would help countries to then understand the gap that the ASPG um, will help them to fill in their sanitation um, in, in their sanitation policy. We're talking um, the, the next point that we're working on, and this is a continuous process because right from the beginning of the ASPG and development up till now, awareness creation, we cannot overemphasize that. So, and I think these are one of some of the ways, um, some of the acts to the platform, Serene and, and, and colleagues. So awareness creation, we need everybody everywhere to know about the ASPG and what the ASPG offers. So we'll create um, awareness at different platforms, continental, regional platform, advocate to um, decision makers for ASPG um, uptake. And, uh, and also talking about awareness creation, as you all know, the AMCA um, Secretariat just appointed the first lady of Sierra Leone as the sanitation champion. And we are working to develop a robust work plan for her as to how the ASPG, sanitation in general across the um, continent, will be prioritized and how the ASPG will play a key role in supporting countries to move from policy um, to action. So um, these are some of the things that AMCA is doing 
post ASPG launch. And we're calling on Susanna uh, platform. We know you have wealth of experts, huge network of experts. And one of the ways we see the role of, of, of Susanna is the back um, technical backstopping support. So when country, when organizations are in country supporting uh, to support them in policy development, we can then um, um, approach Susanna. So, for example, if we need somebody to develop um, the regulation section in, in, say, country A, sanitation policy, we can then run to Susanna to say, who is the expert in your amongst your network that can support this country on the in regulation? And the same thing applies to financing. The same thing applies to um, sanitation service levels. So I, 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 I encourage Susanna um, to join the partner uh, policy engagement coordination platform, what we call the PCEP, and then to begin to outline those experts that would be come that would come in handy during the ASPG um, development across countries, across Africa and even beyond. Um, thank you very much for your support. Thank you for your kind attention. And I'm happy to take any questions if you have. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much, you. Dr. Comfort. Thank you very much, Dr. Leonita. Um, are there any questions before we do wrap up and uh, close down? So today, I hope, has to a certain extent clarified the uh, two major pathways that the Susanna Africa chapter would be uh, focusing on. Uh, as mentioned, the ASPG uh, uh, rollout, but also the issues of women and what. So really, thank you to the panelists and the present to the presenters in terms of providing the rationale, the background and the justification of also why these were the main uh, um, the main course of action that uh, not only members selected, but also a new uh, as a whole. Uh, we really would have to close within five minutes, but are there any questions, comments, uh, reactions? Well, thanks a lot as well from my side. Okay. It's great to hear all this. Uh, Serene, oh, just, oh. just one comment. Could you please may, um, send us the uh, slides from both presenters? Yes. yes. Thank I'll you. go ahead and do that. And do that. Um, um, there is a comment is that a has come in. I don't know why I have an I echo. Uh, from Tanzania, uh, from Tanzania that, uh, we should start, we should focusing, start on focusing on the challenges of water and sanitation in small-scale small mining, mining area. So thank you, thank you for you that, that contribution, contribution from TZ. So, so if there are no further questions, what we will be doing next is uh, in preparation now for uh, Stockholm that is coming up with uh, AMCAO. So, what we have discussed today would uh, be uh, unpacked uh, quite heavily uh, uh, with uh, the uh, session that is coming up. Uh, as mentioned, uh, development of the schedule of the working groups and the rollout, but also in terms of supporting uh, AMCAO and or equally supporting the women and WASH uh, um, agenda. Uh, thank you very much for being here, for taking the time to uh, uh, spend this one hour and a half with us. And uh, we call on you to for your continued support. And we shall uh, see you see you soon. I don't know if you want to say any any parting shots or any parting words. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for. Bye and everyone. ASP maybe can as well be mentioned and featured with uh, yeah. two slides in the in the plenary, and the other one will be very much in the agenda session. So great. Yeah. Great. Thanks Excellent. a lot. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.